tender and juicy Italian meatballs smothered in marinara and baked under a layer of gooey cheese. Oh, this is so good. I'm gonna show you how to make meatballs parmesan and I'm hungry, so let's get started. We'll start with making the Italian meatballs and the secret to making the juiciest meatballs is to start with fresh bread. I'm using an organic white sliced bread here. Remove the crusts, then dice it up into small pieces. Set those into a large mixing bowl and the food scraper of course makes everything easier. I will link to it in the notes. Pour your milk over the breadcrumbs and stir it together with a fork, then let it rest for five minutes. You wanna give the breadcrumbs time to soak up the milk, then mash everything together with a fork. Now we add the meat, and I have two different kinds here. I'm mixing together one pound of ground pork and one pound of lean ground beef. You can also use Italian sausage instead of ground pork if you prefer, but combining the two meats adds so much flavor. We're gonna crack in one large egg, also a quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, then mince three garlic cloves or use a garlic press to make it easier. Also, finely chop up about two tablespoons of fresh parsley, and I do like to chop a little extra for garnish at the end. Add that to your meat mixture, then season with some salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Now we mix it all together, and honestly, the best tool that you have for mixing meatball mixture is your hands. It's the only way to ensure everything is really well combined without over mixing, and you can use a glove to keep your hands clean. A glove can also help a little bit if the meat is really cold. Mix that together until the breadcrumbs and everything is really well combined, then stop mixing. To portion these out quickly and evenly, I'm using a trigger release cookie scoop. I also have my cutting board lined with plastic wrap to make it a little more non-stick. I like making big, impressive meatballs with this recipe, but you can make them smaller if you prefer. Once they're all scooped, the best way to roll your meatballs is to get your hands wet with a little bit of water. This keeps the meat from sticking to your hands and then it'll roll easily. Dip your hands every now and then in water to keep them non-stick. Hey, Dipping your hands in water also creates a really smooth surface on the meatballs, making them really pretty and professional looking once they're cooked. Now it's time to hit the stove. You'll need a large skillet. Set that over medium heat and generously coat the bottom with oil. Once the oil is hot, add the meatballs in a single layer. You'll need to cook these in two batches because there are a lot of meatballs. Turn them about every two minutes just to make sure you're getting a good sear on all sides. You wanna make sure the sides look browned. That ensures that it seals in the juices. It should take about eight minutes total to cook one batch of meatballs and to make it go faster, you can use two skillets at once. Plus, to keep your stove clean, I love my splatter guard. I will link to it in the notes. Also, you don't have to worry about making sure they're fully cooked through at this point. Remember, they're still gonna finish off in the oven. Our meatballs are almost done, so we're gonna quickly prepare our casserole. You're gonna add one cup of your favorite marinara sauce to the bottom of the casserole dish, then add your first layer of seared meatballs. Repeat that process, cooking your second batch of meatballs, adding more oil as needed, then transfer them to the casserole dish and they should fit in a single layer in a nine by 13 casserole. Now pour the remaining two cups of marinara sauce over the meatballs. Try to cover the meatballs as best you can. Also, we do have a really good homemade marinara sauce. I will link to that in the notes. Sprinkle on the remaining quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, then add a generous layer of shredded mozzarella cheese. Cover your casserole dish with foil, then bake in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to bake on the center rack. Bake for about 30 minutes or until the sauce is bubbly, the cheese is melted, and the center of the meatball should register at 165 degrees Fahrenheit on an instant read thermometer. <laughs> All right, dinner is served. And this is so good over pasta. You can serve it over potatoes, over rice. And it's also really good in like a hoagie roll. So you can make a meatball sub out of this. I mean, it is so saucy and satisfying. So many ways to serve this. I can't even wait. I'm just gonna serve it up and enjoy it because you guys need this taste test. <laughs> Am I right? But I do like to add a little bit of garnish. So I sprinkle on some parsley and that's what I'm gonna do because it does need a little pop of color.
color, you know, pop of flavor, a little freshness. Here we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna serve this up because like I said, I cannot wait. And these are scorching hot, so I might burn my mouth. <laughs> Worth it, I guess. <laughs> Look at this cheese pull. Oh, baby. I love me a cheesy meatball. I don't know, I just like have a weakness for cheesy recipes. And these meatballs are enormous, which you'll love because they're so juicy inside. Searing the meatballs first before putting them in the oven seals in all those natural juices and flavor. Oh, oh, the cheese, oh, the cheese. The most important thing to remember is to add more sauce. Like once you've plated these or whoever you're serving them, the sauce is just, mm, it adds so much to the dish. So make sure you add plenty of sauce. We're gonna garnish a little more. We're gonna dive in. Oh, my hair is driving me bananas today. <laughs> Just gonna cut right into this. I want you to see inside. And they're so soft. The fork just like slides right through them. These meatballs are incredibly tender, I'm telling you. Look at how juicy this is. I mean, it's like, if I squished it with my fork, you could probably see the juices coming out. It's so good. And then while they're baked in the oven, the marinara infuses them with flavor, but it actually tenderizes them even more. Okay, come to mama. Here we go, the taste test. Ooh, that's a big bite. This is half of a meatball, look. I'm intimidated by it. <laughs> That's how big these are. Okay, here we go. Mm. <laughs> mm. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> and also because they're saucy and covered with cheese, these also keep really well in the fridge and reheat beautifully. So it's perfect for meal prep. But I seriously think you're gonna love all the different ways you can serve this. I'm gonna dig into this and uh, things are about to get serious. But also, if you guys are looking for more easy dinner ideas, our new cookbook is loaded with fun, family-friendly dinner ideas that are simple enough for everyday weeknight meals. I will leave a link to this in the notes and let me know where you spotted Sharky in the video. Plus, if you have any recipe requests, anything you'd wanna see on our channel, please let me know. I'm gonna go eat this. <laughs> so hungry. You work up an appetite when you're smelling the good smells in the kitchen. Coated in all the extra sauce, all the extra cheese. <clears throat> That's my jam, baby. That's my jam. That's what I'm talking about. Honey, get in here. Get over here. Oh, the kids are gonna be happy when they get home from school. High in protein, pretty low in carbs. Mm.